But we need to think about physical safety uh, to now include fatigue, right? And fatigue, by the way, is a huge driver of burnout. Maybe not surprising. But what about the workplace violence that we've now seen increase uh, in some work environments in healthcare, particularly emergency departments, right? That is, that's important as part of physical safety. We've mentioned the importance of musculoskeletal injuries for those surgeons or obstetricians that have maybe injuries positional or with instruments that sometimes can lead to harm. So there's that whole piece that is linked and so important in, in physical safety. But psychological safety, there's been a bit more work in that area. Uh, it's evolving still, but there have been some standards. The Mental Health Commission of Canada have developed some standards to allow for psychological safety. And, you know, we're working on a definition to really make it crisp, like what really is uh, what's it like for someone to feel psychologically safe in their medical environment? And part of it is just feeling like you are able to speak without fear of retaliation or being embarrassed, um, you know, in your learning or training environment. So again, there's more work there. We need to adapt it to medicine. And then the last piece that's newer is cultural safety. You know, what is that exactly? And we're, we're trying to see it as more about identities, right? That no matter which identities that, that you feel um, you identify with is respected, that you are seen for who you are as an individual, that you can be your authentic self at work. So again, we're trying to figure out what definition that, that is. But what's fascinating is that with all the groups that we've met, they agree safety is important. In fact, to be well, you need to have safety as a, a fundamental foundational layer like Maslow's hierarchy of needs you need that that safety so what does that look like in all our training and practice environments Jordan that's part of what we're trying to figure out is there an approach that or a roadmap everyone can take how do we measure and capture that how do we use standards uh, or not or um, how do we make sure that there's accountability to make sure that everyone you know including patients are safe. So that's work that we've been doing at the CMA. The other really interesting initiative is improving wellness by decreasing administrative burden. Huge hot topic at the moment, right? That most docs can, <laughs> can relate with. And the idea is to say, look, there's so many hours that are spent with unnecessary admin burden that we need to do something about that. So the CMA put together a working group to come up with key recommendations on on the role, like what could CMA do to help improve this area? Family docs are hugely impacted by this, but it all but it affects every physician in the end. But the recommendations that came out of the working group were some basic principles, like we need to always involve physicians in the code design or, or in solutions, right? That's so important. Involve us from the beginning. The idea of advocacy and really raising the level of awareness of this issue is really being one that interferes or that affects safety. But the key recommendations were about interoperability. So let's look at improving interoperability. So CMA is now involved uh, on a task force to look at interoperability and, and make some recommendations for that area, right, in terms of data sharing and access to information. One other area is federal forms. <laughs> so can we look at ways to either eliminate or simplify or delegate some of these national or federal forms um, because they're very, very time consuming. And one of the most, you know, the culprits uh, would be like the, the disability tax form or CPP disability, right? Taking huge amounts of time uh, that could be used for, for clinical care. So that's work that's being done. Uh, the other area is AI. How can we use AI safely? Uh, and, and what regulations would be um, used uh, to apply AI as a solution, not to add more burden, but as a solution. And finally, sick notes, like is there legislation that we can come up with and, and advocate for that will either eliminate or reduce sick notes? Because again, that takes up a huge amount of, of valuable clinical time. So what's super interesting is that based uh, on work from Nova Scotia, CFIB uh, shared a report where they used the Nova Scotia results and expanded them at the national level to say, hey, unnecessary admin burden was costing like 18.5 million hours per year of physician time. And that equates to like 55 million visits. Um, and so we need to improve admin burden to free up some of the time 
not only for more access to care for patients, but also for physicians to be able to take care of themselves. You know, we're talking about that work-life balance or to invest in professional development or to continue working on more solutions to reduce admin burden even more with their team. So that's a, something that's a bit, again, it's more tangible. This is meant to be impactful. And so the work is ongoing and will continue over the next year or so. So I look forward to, to seeing what, what impact uh, that's going to have. The other work CMA is doing is on human resource planning and just saying, you know, what can we improve in our regulatory processes to make it easier for, for locums, right, to work, to go to different provinces. So pan-Canadian licensure has been an area of focus as well for the CMA. And, um, and for us, you know, measurement, we've talked about the National Physician Health Survey. It is very important to us to continue having that pulse of Canadian physicians and learners. And what's really unique, I think, about the surveys that, that we create is that it's not just measuring the prevalence of health outcomes, but it's linking them to, to some of the drivers uh, of wellness, whether it's work conditions, work environment, whether it's the professional culture, psych safety. So we're really trying to stay current and relevant for what's going on at that time and, and make as much many links as we can, because then that means that we're pointed towards the pain points and the drivers so we can actually uh, work on, on true solutions. So the last piece I'll say is that through a lever of funding, we've really tried to work with partners to make a difference. And I, I have to highlight and, and I have huge gratitude for the affinity uh, partnership or agreement, which is um, an agreement between the CMA, but Scotiabank and MD management. And in, in that agreement, they committed $115 million to support physicians with a particular focus on physician wellness. So up to date, and I, I, it's higher than this, but there's been over $74 million spent specifically towards physician wellness initiatives. And I'll highlight some examples. Like they did early on, gave a little bit of money specifically to physician health programs. The pandemic then came. There was a helpline that was created to ensure that all Canadian physicians, learners, and their families had access to a wellness line during the two years of the, the pandemic. So that was funded through Affinity. They're funding some of our conferences, like the Canadian Conference on Physician Health, which we just had uh, this fall in Montreal. And now we're co-hosting the upcoming International Conference on Physician Health. This will be in, in Halifax in October. Super exciting. Uh, to be co-hosting with the American Medical Association and the British Medical Association. Uh, but most recently, the affinity funding um, was directed to create grants, grants to improve uh, or reduce administrative burdens. So this was the Healthcare Unburdened Grants. We're still waiting for uh, to hear the, the winners of the grant, but that was another way that the funding lever and specifically affinity uh, is really working to make change. And um, the other piece that Affinity did is it funded a whole gamut of what we called Physician Wellness Plus initiatives across the country as pilots over four years to see, hey, what's what can be innovative? What can work? What can make a difference and be scaled up? So, so funding has certainly been one of the levers that the CMA has used to make a difference um, in physician wellness. And, and so with some of these projects, um, our physician wellness and medical culture team continues to advocate. We continue to post on our, we have a cma.ca wellness hub where we've posted a whole bunch of curated resources and articles, either for individual physicians, but also for the physician leader. Like someone that's a newly appointed physician uh, champion can look in that, that section to find specific articles that, that may help them, like the ones that we've talked about today uh, in the podcast, Jordan. Um, but there's also resources leading you directly to the physician health program in your province. So, you know, making some of the, the resources um, more easily accessible is one of our, our mandates as well in our team. I'm Dr. Jordan Valrath, and you've been watching Cherry Live, brought to you by Cherry Health. Please like and subscribe to see more clips like this or check us out at www.cherry.health, Canada's medical network. Thank <music> you.